Hello friends and welcome to this week's landscape photography vlog, and this time we're in the swamps capturing beautiful fall color. In this video I teach you how you can photograph from a canoe, which came with a lot of challenges and learning experiences, but ended up being one of the most rewarding shoots I've ever had. We're also joined by a few familiar faces along the way. I really hope you enjoy watching. Alright, so I got Andrew right here in front of me, and we are in a canoe paddling down a beautiful bayou and uh, it's before sunrise as you can see it's really dark got our headlamps going and uh, we're gonna do a little bit of swamp photography today for sunrise So before sunrise it was far too dark to shoot anything, so we spent our time paddling around looking for different compositions that we could then shoot later on. So it is right after sunrise, a bit of a challenge this morning. The conditions were tough and I'm also finding it a little tricky to figure out what settings to use and what techniques to use for this style of photography. But let me show you how cool this is real quick. All right, so I've got my 28 to 200 here and that's what it looks like at about 35, 40, but check this out. If I go and isolate some of these trees, you can see some people in canoes and kayaks out there, which is pretty cool. But look at that. The lighting is a bit flat right now, but that color out there in the trees is spectacular. This is the first time I've ever tried to photograph anything like this, so it, a lot of experimentation, trying to figure out how to isolate certain trees and get like a nice clean background. You know, we're in this canoe, so it's rocking and it's moving, and especially before sunrise, that means it's really tricky to do any sort of long exposures. So what I've been doing is having to bump the ISO really high and then also turning stabilization on in the camera. So here are my first test shots, and you'll notice that I'm not including the reflections from the water in any of these compositions. The main reason for that is I wanted to keep it simple at first and just see how I could compose the textures of the trees with the different fall foliage. I shot most of these images pretty close to 200 millimeters, so I really had to prioritize my shutter speed, bump my ISO, and then look at the back of the camera to make sure what I was shooting was actually in focus. Look at these guys. Look at those guys over there. What are they doing, huh? So we got the light coming out right there. And we've got some friends. We've got good old Gavin. Wow, lovely. Just serious about his <laughs> photography. <laughs> got Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Hello. How's the morning going? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, Where it's... else would you want to be? Oh, look, the dappled light behind you. Behind you, Gavin. Behind you, Gavin. Oh. Wow. Photogasmic moment. Oh, look at that though, behind you. Ooh. Let's run for sure now. All right. My expert paddling skills. Everyone say bye to Gavin and Amanda. Bye bye. So the light just came out and it is looking really beautiful. So I think Andrew and I are going to paddle around and see if we could find some interesting lighting with the trees. And now that the light is out, <laughs> I probably don't need to be doing any long exposures. So I can probably shoot most of this handheld, I think. So we've been paddling around and we found some really cool stuff. So check this out, beautiful backlighting. This is a little bit wider. Zooming in, you can really isolate some of these areas in here with the fall foliage. And check this out now. If I aim the camera in this direction, really nice soft light, kind of just trying to get some three dimensionality to the trees and really just arrange them in pleasing positions. Even 
even though the style of photography was still very new to me and I felt a bit overwhelmed with it all, at this point I started to realize the different shapes and textures that I wanted to focus on. The backlit Spanish moss here ended up being absolutely incredible to witness and I loved the color contrast you have here with the orange fall foliage and then the cooler branches of the trees. And I further accentuated that with some color correction in post. It's certainly a, a bit of a learning curve trying to photograph landscape photography from a canoe, from a moving vehicle. Now it's a lot easier now that the sun is out. We've got just some beautiful three-dimensionality to the trees. And what I'm doing here settings wise is I'm just bumping my ISO just enough to where I can get my camera to do about F16. That way I get everything pretty sharp, even if there are some trees out in the background. You know, when it comes to this type of photography too, since we're slowly moving, you kind of have to be quick. If you see a composition, you gotta be pretty quick to shoot it. And then if you missed it, you have to paddle backwards a bit <laughs> to get the composition that you had before. So taking a quick break from this session, I wanted to show you a boat tour that we took the day beforehand, which was a great way to get a sense for the area. Do something. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I didn't know it was going. So, what, what, what do you think, Michael? You enjoying this? Yeah. yeah. Do it's something weird. funny, like in the movies, like in the videos. You know, it's it's weird, like how we bumped into each other. You know, like and here we are working together. Like after you said, I'm never working with you again. It's great, that, isn't it? Don't you think? You know, it's time heals. So. Time heals all wounds, doesn't it? <laughs> If you're not sure what he's talking about, make sure to check out Gavin's channel where we did some videos together and we ran into a little situation where Gavin owed me some money. I very respectfully and calmly asked him for it back and we sorted everything out no problem. I always find in situations of contention, it's always good to just keep a level head and make sure to take the high road. I managed to capture a few images on this boat ride that I was really happy with and here they are. This area of the lake that we explored on the boat was completely different than the one that I shot at sunrise. They had different bits of color, different shapes to the trees, and it was really fun to compare the two shoots. This one right here is one of my favorite images out of the bunch, and I love how you have the different shades of yellows mixed with the reds, and then those darker blues right behind. It was also nice that in this spot we were able to get cleaner reflections with less distracting elements on the surface of the water. Uh oh, we are going for it. Andrew's going for it. Beautiful backlighting back here. Really pretty. Oof, look at this. That is so pretty. Just trying to use my hand over the top of the lens just for some flare. Right now I'm doing one two hundredth of a second, F18. Should we go try it one more time? Should be good. All right, Let's see if we can get this. So this is what we, we mean by we keep resetting by like paddling back and forth to get the composition. So now the light is getting a bit harsher, which is a good and a bad thing because, you know, definitely the light is less soft on the trees, but it does give us the opportunity to find those little areas where trees are spot lit. Um, so we're just kind of paddling around looking for different areas. Like in here, you can see there's some really nice dappled light. And then over here, we've still got some really nice backlighting. So yeah, just kind of cruising around to see what looks interesting for photography. This 
This one was a lot of fun to capture, and I love that swooshing pattern the branch makes where it dips down towards the middle of the image and then arcs back up with the orange shades of fall color. The one thing that was tough here is there was a bit of wind, so the reflection wasn't as clean as I had hoped for, and if I was to redo this image, I would try a long exposure. And luckily I found another technique that works really well to do long exposures of these trees, and I'm going to share that one in the next swamp video. Got the beautiful side lighting, partial light coming through. Right now I'm at 1 200th of a second. I just keep bouncing between different shutter speeds because I'm honestly not entirely sure what's going to yield me the best result. And it really depends on how much the boat is shaking too. <laughs> I thought this image turned out really nice with this dramatic spotlighting on the tree and the shadow play going on in the water. I also thought this was a perfect example of isolating certain trees by having a darker background. Alright Andrew, what did you think? I think that light just brings this place alive and I'm having a blast just paddling around and taking photos of uh, wherever the wind takes us to. <laughs> which apparently is drifting us uh, into a tree. <laughs> I love the tree. This photograph really stood out to me for a few different reasons. I love the different colors that you had here with some of those greens that are right towards the water and the shade of orange that's kind of taking up the top of the frame. And then it's broken up by that beautiful white moss towards the middle of the image that's kind of swaying in the wind. Again, I wish there was a little less wind here so I could have gotten a clean reflection, but overall I'm still really happy with the way this one turned out. Not a bad way to uh, start the day, but it's getting a little bit harsh now with the lighting. The sun is getting kind of high in the sky, so I think what we're gonna do is paddle on out of here. Definitely some learning experiences. So if you ever decide to do photography like this, the, the biggest thing I can say here is just have some patience because you're not gonna get it right away. <laughs> it's gonna take a while to kind of, you know, figure out what you're really looking for and also just from a technical standpoint, figure out exactly you know, how you wanna photograph these, these trees. And it's really gonna depend on, on your style of photography. Like for me, I'm, I'm all about the telephoto lens. So a lot of my stuff is gonna be you know, anywhere from 50 millimeters all the way up to like 200 or 400. And the tough part about doing that is especially you know, at night or, or right before sunrise, it's so hard to get light into the camera and still get a nice stationary shot. And maybe tonight on my laptop, I'll analyze the photos just to see, you know, what worked and what didn't work. But look at this, amazing, seriously, come on. This shoot was one of the toughest I've done in a while and really took me out of my comfort zone. But I feel like throughout the video, I really started to get my bearings and started to understand how I wanted to photograph the trees. And in the coming days, I would get even more comfortable shooting here and find new techniques that worked really well. So make sure to stay tuned for those new videos. And now I would love to hear from you. Which photograph from this video ended up being your favorite? Please let me know in the comments. And with that, I really hope you enjoyed watching. If you want to learn more from me, you can check out my workshop page on my website for in-person or online workshops. If you enjoyed watching, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.